All right. Let's go to the Word of God on this morning. Uh, we're going we're to from Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. And we're going to look at verses 38 through 42. Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. <clears throat> Familiar text here. All right, Luke 10, 38 through 42. It says, and Jesus, and I'm reading from the, the Living Bible Translation, by the way. Uh, it says, as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a village where a woman named Martha welcomed them into her home. Her sister Mary sat on the floor listening to Jesus as he talked. But Martha was the jittery type and was worrying over the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Sir, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all of the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, Martha, dear friend, you are so upset over all these details. There is really only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and I won't take it away from her. Amen. If you are taking notes on today, I am coming from the topic, keeping the main thing, the main thing. Keeping the main thing, the main thing. Here in the text, what we see here is that in verse 38, it tells us that Jesus is traveling with his disciples. As he's traveling with his disciples, he's uh, on his way to Jerusalem. And as he's on his way to Jerusalem, he comes to this town, this village, most likely this town that he came to was Bethany. Um, so when he comes to, to Bethany, uh, he comes to this town and he meets this woman by the name of Martha. Uh, Martha, she meets Jesus and she invites Jesus into her home. I'm going to say that again. She, she invites Jesus the Son of God, all right, God in the flesh, she invites him into her home. We're going to come back to that. But let's look at verse 39. Let's go a little bit deeper in the text here on today. Verse 39 again, it says, Her sister Mary sat on the floor listening to Jesus as he talked. So here you, you have Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him as he spoke to her. Now, you have to understand, like I said before, this is Jesus that we're talking about here. And Mary, she's at the feet of Jesus, and Jesus is speaking to her. In other words, when Jesus is speaking to her, uh, he's pouring wisdom into her. Um, he's giving her knowledge, right? So in other words, Mary, she's learning from the master. She's learning from Jesus himself, the son of God, God in the flesh, all right? The one that has always been and the one who always will be. She's at the feet of Jesus. But something also is interesting here in the text is that you have to understand uh, things that took place in those days. It was very rare um, for um, people of Jesus' stature right, uh, to be uh, uh, talking and mixing among uh, or discipling a woman. 
Okay. Discipling a, a woman at that time was not normal. But here you have Jesus discipling a woman, which was rare at that time. In other words, Jesus, he, he, he breaks what norm says we should do. He breaks what society says we, we should do. But Jesus always does what is right. Society and the culture at that time said you cannot disciple a woman. But Jesus, being Jesus, is teaching Mary as she's sitting at his feet. Mary, she is learning from the master. And who knows what Mary may have been going through at this point in her life. She's at the feet of Jesus. They're having this conversation. I'm pretty sure Jesus is pouring wisdom and knowledge into her. And she's at his feet just learning and taking in everything that he is telling her. All right. But let's look at what takes place next. Verse 40. It says, but Martha, that's her sister, was the jittery type and was worrying over the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, sir, does it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. Right, let's 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 break down this text here. You have you have two sisters, all right, Martha and Mary. Um, the word tells us that um, the nature of Martha was was to worry a lot, you know, always in the weeds, always concerned about the details and so forth, right? Right. And it's not a sin to, to, to be concerned about details and to even get into the weeds of things. It's, it's not a sin, right? But, but uh, she's worrying, right? She's, she's stressing, right? She's doing all this stuff, and she's worried about somebody else. In other words, she's worried about what someone else is not or what they may be doing. She's, she's uh, more concerned about what somebody else has going on, what somebody else is doing, right? So, so she, she comes to Jesus and she's like, Jesus, are you going to ask her to come and help me? Watch this. She actually thought Mary wasn't doing anything. That's what she thought by Mary sitting at the feet of the living God, God in the flesh, right? The word of God. She's, she's sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning, taking in everything that Jesus is giving her. And Martha thought Mary was not doing anything. <laughs> she thought that by Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, she was wasting her time. Okay, she, she thought Mary was just uh, wasting time by sitting at the feet of Jesus. She, she thought Mary should have been uh, doing busy work <laughs> uh, than listening to the teachings and the wisdom from Jesus, all right? And a lot of times people think that uh, uh, we don't have to do certain things since we're now in the kingdom. They're like, uh, uh, why are you always reading your word? You know, Aren't you saved? Do you have to continue to read your word? Haven't you read that same verse before? <laughs> Haven't you read that same book before? Haven't you read that same story before? OK, they, they they think that you no longer have to do the same things that you used to do. Right. Before you came into the kingdom, it's almost like when you 
uh, first get to a relationship. You know, you do all these things uh, to attract the other one. You know, you put on the, the nice clothes and you get the nice haircuts or hairdos and you know, whether you have your, 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 your dress shoes on, you have the skirt and all of that, fellas. You, know, you have the, 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 nice, the nice shirt and so forth, nice, nice slacks and nice dress shoes and, and, and all of that. You know, you're looking good, smelling good, you shave, you did all of this stuff. Ladies, you got the, the earrings, the necklace, the watch, the bracelet. You got all of this stuff and you do all of these things to attract the other one. Once you get them, once you spend some time together, you slowly back up. You slowly back away and stop doing everything you used to do to keep that individual, to, to keep things going with that other person. Well, a lot of people think that now that we're saved, now that we have received Jesus into our hearts, into our lives, we don't have to continue to do the same things that we used to do beforehand. But that's a lie from the pits of hell. We must always continue to learn and to grow and to stay in communion with God. Martha was like, Mary, what are you doing? You need to be with me in this kitchen. <laughs> have me prepare this Thanksgiving turkey. You know, prepare the the, 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 the mashed potatoes and the, the collars and the greens and the ham and all these things. You need to be helping me out in the kitchen instead of wasting your time with Jesus. In other words, she thought that Mary wasn't doing a thing. She thought Mary should have been helping her and should have also been doing busy work. <laughs> busy work. But watch this. Being busy does not equal being effective. There are many busy people in the kingdom, but the question is, are you effective? Mary is doing more by sitting than Martha is doing by working. Oh, that was so nice. Let me say that twice. Martha, I mean, Excuse me. Mary is doing more by sitting than Martha is doing by working. I'm going to say that for the third time. Mary is doing more by sitting than Martha is doing by working. In other words, let me break that down. Mary is learning and growing at this particular time. It may not be the time right then for Mary to go to work. Oh! <clears throat> watch this, watch this. Um, some people, they start doing things and they're not prepared to do what they're doing. Instead of them learning and growing and developing in certain areas of their lives, they go out and they start working beforehand and they're not equipped to do the work in which they're doing. My Lord. So you have, you have Mary, she's learning, she's being developed. She's growing by sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha, she decides just to go to work. <laughs> In other words, I'm going to go to work. I'll see about Jesus later. I know he's in our home. He's under our roof. But I'll see him later. Right now, I'm just going to worry about all the details. I'm going to get to the weeds of everything and I'm going to go to work. But Mary decided to sit at the feet of Jesus so she can learn and grow. So she can she can be developed before she goes to work. Mary, she 
was doing what Jesus wanted her to do. <laughs> have you have you um, have you sat and listened to God and uh, um, you decided to um, um, to not do the things that God wanted you to do? Uh, I've been there. I've I've sat at the feet of Jesus. I've listened to God and I decided, you know what? I'm I'm not going to do that right there. I'm going to do this instead. <laughs> we all have fell into a uh, a point in our lives where we all have been disobedient at certain times. Mm -hmm. But maybe it could have been the fact that we didn't sit for longer and, do, and we didn't really uh, take heed to what God was asking us to do. Right? So in other words, Mary, she's taking her time. She's not rushing to go do something, but she is she is uh, uh, being she is soaking in everything that Jesus is telling her, that Jesus is teaching her. All right. And we all must learn. We all must grow. We all must get to a point where we must mature in our Christian faith. All right. And get to the point where when God says we're ready to go to work, then we go to work. But many of us, we go to work beforehand and we're busy doing work, but we're not effective in what we're doing because we didn't take the time to listen and to grow and to be developed in those certain areas. Let me be clear about this right here. It's nothing wrong with working, right? Nothing wrong with working for the Lord. Uh, and we all should be working for the Lord. But we are and we must do the right things at the right time. The right things must be done at the right time. All right. And many of us are doing the wrong things at the wrong time. And we're not effective in what we're doing because we didn't take the time to sit, to listen, to grow, and to be developed by God. Hmm. So, uh, Martha, right? Martha is busy, but at this point in the text, is she effective in what she is doing? So she goes to to Jesus, and she tells Jesus uh, that Mary needs to help her. But watch this right here. Uh, I told you before they were coming back to this. Martha, she's the one that invited Jesus into her home. Um, it wasn't it wasn't Mary, according to the text. It was Martha. Martha said, Jesus, come in. Come under my roof. Come under my home. All right? She's the one that invited him in. And watch this. When she invited Jesus into her home, she's not even spending time with him. Hmm. <laughs> mm. It's a short message today, but I hope you're learning something. Watch this. She invited and said, Jesus, come into my home. You're invited to come under my roof. You're invited to come and to be in my presence. You're, you're invited to come in. And then Jesus comes in and she's not spending any time with him. Mm. She's just working and working and working and working and working, but not spending any time with Jesus. How many of us are guilty of that? Mm. We have invited Jesus to come in, but we're not spending no time with him. We say we're saved. We say we love Jesus. We say we praise and worship him, do all these things. But how many of us are spending that quality time with him? If we do things for the church and we 
pass out flyers and we do this and we do all these things and we're just doing busy work. You're just busy. Just busy. Just busy. Do a whole lot of busy work, but how much time are you really, really spending with him? That quiet time of sitting at his feet like Mary is doing. That's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer that out loud. Just, just think within yourself. How many of us are just doing busy work, but not spending that quality time with the Savior? Martha, she's the one that invited him in. But there's nowhere in the text where she sat with Mary to learn and to grow and to be developed by Jesus. She just decided to go to work and she's worrying about all the little details of things. Some of us need to sit at the feet of Jesus and to learn and to grow some more before we go back to work. But let's look at the response of Jesus in verse 41. It says, but the Lord said to her, Martha, dear friend, you are so upset over all these details. In other words, watch this. Sometimes we are so busy doing things. We're, we're so busy doing and, 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 and just doing this and doing that. And we're not making any progress whatsoever. We think we're making progress, but sometimes we're like that hamster and that hamster wheel. We're just going, we're just spinning and spinning and, spinning and we're not going anywhere. Truth be told, some of us, we have too many things on our plate. Yeah, Just like Thanksgiving, you had too much on your plate. <laughs> I did too. But sometimes we just have too much going on in our lives. And we're doing so much. We're, we're taking on this and we're taking on that. And we're taking, about to, we're taking on other people's issues and other people's problems. And we have all these burdens on us, which we shouldn't have. Martha is so concerned about Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. She decides to take on everything that she's already doing. And then start worrying about Mary. <laughs> Mary, she's doing what she's supposed to be doing. Martha, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? It's the real question. <laughs> Some of us, we have so much on our plates. And we're, we have so much going on in our lives with work and family and businesses and kids and all these things. And school and just all these things. But yet, we just want to take on more things. And add it to our plates. That's what Martha is doing here in the text. She, she, she's taking on too much. She's already worried about all the details and worried about what's going to happen and, and trying to prepare a, a perfect meal for Jesus. Trying to be so perfect for Jesus. But watch this. We're not going to be perfect for Jesus. We're not always going to get things right. We're going to mess up sometimes. We're going to fall short sometimes. We're going to make a complete fool of ourselves sometimes. But watch this. That's the time we need to sit at the feet of Jesus so he can show us and help us not to make some of the same mistakes that we wouldn't have made if we would have sat at his feet beforehand before we went to work. Preach on, preacher. Martha is doing busy work, but she's not effective. She's not effective. But what was the response from Jesus to Martha again? And watch this. Verse 42. Let's continue on. And we're almost done. Verse 42. Jesus says again to Martha, he says, there is really only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. And then Jesus says, and I won't take it away from her. <laughs> Martha is busy doing busy work. Just working 
and working and working and working. Jesus tells Martha, mm -mm. Mary, she has discovered what's important. She has discovered the main thing. And she's keeping the main thing the main thing. And guess what, Martha? I'm not going to take that away from her. She's doing what she's supposed to be doing. She's doing exactly what I would have her to do. In other words, you decide to invite me into your home and you're not spending any time with me whatsoever. But yet you have Mary here. She's sitting here and she's learning from me. She wants to be in my presence. She wants to fellowship with me. She wants to hear from me. She's talking to me. I'm talking to her. I'm talking to her. She's talking to me. As I talk to her, she's listening. As she talks to me, I'm listening. We're having fellowship with one another. And she's at my feet, learning and growing. And you know what, Martha? I'm not going to take that away from her. Yeah, I know you, 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 you're trying to do things for me. You're being busy. You're preparing this nice meal for me. That's great. We'll eat <laughs> at a certain time, right? We will eat. We will sit down and fellowship with one another in that capacity. But right now, she's learning. And you don't have to interrupt her learning from me to make it seem like she's not doing what she needs to do. And to make it seem like you're doing what's more important for me to get take my eyes off of her and place my eyes on you. A lot of times people want to interrupt what we're doing, right? To take the attention from us and place it on them. But Jesus said, Mary, she's doing the right thing. She's found the right thing. She has discovered it. <laughs> she has discovered it. And I'm not going to take it away from her. We all need to get back into rediscovering how to get back in right standing with God. Amen. That, that fellowship, that quality time, just to sit at the feet of Jesus. We all can learn from Mary. We can learn from Martha too. We can learn from Mary as far as what she has discovered, what she has found. There's all sorts of little nuggets in the word of God. Just little, just little nuggets that we can pick up and just learn from. Jesus tells us that Mary had her priorities in order. She said, right now, Jesus is the main thing, so I'm going to focus on him. I'm going to place my attention on him. She made sure that Jesus was the main thing and everything else played second fiddle. We can learn a lot from Mary. We need to make sure that we place God first. Everything else. Is second fiddle. Things will happen. Things will fall into place when they need to fall into place. Right? Jesus came to the home of Martha. He's going to eventually eat. But it wasn't the right time for it. Right? And sometimes we read the text too quickly. And don't, don't pick up everything it's really telling us. Right? We have to understand that Jesus, although he's God in the flesh, right? He's still human. So he's going to get hungry after a while. He's going to smell the turkey. He's going to smell the ham and smell the sweet potato pie. He's going to smell all that stuff. And he's, he's going to get hungry. <laughs> Just that like we get hungry when we pick up smells and different things from foods. He'll be like, oh, that smells good. Uh, Mary, time to eat. Let's go. <laughs> but it wasn't the right time. Mary was learning and she was growing 
And Jesus wanted to make sure that Mary had everything she needed to be equipped so that when Mary went out to go to work, she was ready to work. Martha should have been at the feet of Jesus, along with Mary, learning and growing as well. And when the time was right, watch this, when the time was right, then Martha and Mary could have went, did whatever they did, and could have been effective in the work that Martha tried to do alone, but now she would have some help. Mary found the main thing, and she kept the main thing, being the main thing. Let us all learn from Mary. Let us all place our attention on Jesus. You know, we just came through Thanksgiving. We're now going into the Christmas season. Let us not take our eyes off of Jesus. Let us not, you know, just go by the happy holidays instead of saying Merry Christmas. Let us not take Christ out of Christmas. Let us remember and reflect on what God did by sending his son and remember what Jesus has done for us and celebrating the birth of the one who came and died and rose from the grave. Let us keep the main thing the main thing. Let us focus on the one that keeps us. The word tells us that Mary discovered it. Mary found it. Let us rediscover that we need to focus on our Savior. When we focus on our Savior and set our priorities in order, everything else will fall into place. But we all must keep the main thing, the main thing. The virtual doors of the church are open at this time. The invitation is extended. If you're not saved on today, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, you can receive him today. It's not complicated. There's no special formula, no, no hoops you have to jump through. But if you want to receive Jesus on today, and make sure that when you leave this earth, that you will spend eternity with God. You can receive Jesus right now. You can say this prayer along with me. You can say, Dear God, thank you for having me on your mind. On today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus came, that Jesus died, and that Jesus rose from the grave. If you have prayed that prayer, you are now saved. There are angels celebrating the fact that you have received Jesus into your hearts. If you have prayed that prayer, we would love to hear from you. Send us a private message, private email. We would love to connect back with you. For all others, if you have any special prayer requests, you can let us know. Uh, you can comment in the comment section. Send us a private message as well. Um, or even send us a text. Uh, we, we definitely respond back to text and we will keep you in our prayers also. Amen. All right, it is tithes and offering time. We have several different ways in which you may be able to give. Um, if you go to our website, thegracecenterga.org, uh, click on that give link. It has all of the different ways in which you may be able to give. You can give directly through the site. You can download our Givelify app. You can give via Cash app, which is the Grace Center GA. Uh, you can also mail your checks or money orders to us as well. Uh, once again, that website is the Grace Center GA dot org. Amen. All right, family. I pray and hope that this message today has blessed you. I hope that you have learned something today that you can apply to your lives. That's what the word is for. The word is here that we can learn from and we can apply what we have learned from the text. We can, we can, we can grow as we go out our daily lives, right? 
So I pray that something uh, was said today that you have you have learned and you can apply to your lives. Amen. All right, let us pray as we are dismissed for today. Lord, we thank you for all that you do. We thank you, Lord, for this word that you have given unto us, Lord. Showing us to how to set our priorities in order. And how to make sure that we have Jesus being the main thing. Focusing on him, Father. Lord, for those who have given their lives to Jesus on today. I pray that you will connect them with a local church and a, a mature Christian that will help them in this new walk with you. For all others that are going through something, whatever it may be, I pray that you will intervene in their situations. I pray that your will is done in their lives. You know all of the details and what they have on their prayer list and maybe even what others have asked them to pray about, Lord. I pray that uh, your will is done and you will have your way in their lives. We pray over the tithes and the offerings that have been given. Bless those who gave and bless those who wanted to give but just didn't have it. And Lord, today as we leave this place, but never ever leave your presence, please go before us and make every crooked place straight in our lives. We give you all of the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. It is in Jesus Christ's name in which we do pray. Amen. All right, everyone. Until next week, I love you. Be safe. Take care.